Buongiorno, this is Kitchen in the Pink and I am Lindsley. And why am I talking like this? <laughs> I'm talking like this because we are gonna make pasta today. Ooh, yes indeedy, I love Italy. And I could eat pasta every single day, but I would be a really, really large person then. <laughs> yeah, so um, I eat it now and then and I love to eat it. So today we're gonna make homemade pasta. Now it's not as hard as you would think. And today we're gonna make gnocchi and specifically a sage truffle parmesan gnocchi. Mm -mm -mm. Now normally a lot of gnocchi is made with potatoes but we are going to use flour and make a uh, gnocchi with flour. So let's get started. Um, I have my KitchenAid mixer and I've got the dough hook in here. Now you do need to make this with a dough hook. You try to do it by hand but I would invest. I mean, this is like the best thing I ever bought. Actually, my mom bought, my mom bought it for me, which is so nice. But the KitchenAid mixer, it's so great. Um, they're usually around $350, $400, and it's probably the best investment you could ever make in your kitchen. So you will use it all the time. So I've got the dough hook in. And um, I'm going to make this with a mixture of semolina flour, which a lot of pasta is made from, is semolina flour. You can get it online, you know, and um, have it delivered to you and also regular flour. So that'll be the mix. But first, I'm going to put my ricotta together because we are making this with ricotta, which is so good. You can buy it at any grocery store. This is actually um, like handmade ricotta from Bristol Farms, which is a very fancy supermarket. Very fancy, but I love it. So what I'm gonna do is put one and a half pounds of ricotta in here. So each of these containers is a pound. So I'm just gonna measure out one and a half pounds. Gonna do as best as I can to be kind of accurate. I need a spoon. Ah! <laughs> Try to have all my ingredients and stuff ready to go, but you know, it's not a perfect world, people. What am I gonna do? Okay, one and a half pounds of ricotta, done. Ugh, smells so good, okay. Then I'm gonna put in two thirds cup of grated Parmesan. Um, and you know, the better your ingredients, the better quality ingredients, the better your food turns out. So try to get some really good Parmesan. It just, it makes a difference. It really, really does. And then I'm gonna put in here one egg, put that right in there. And, don't want the shell in there. And then the egg, an egg yolk. So I'm gonna put this in here. You can save your egg white if you want. If you like to make it like an egg white omelet for breakfast or something, that would be groovy. And this is so much fun. You can do it with your friends, you can do it with your family. It's fun to make homemade pasta. Okay, clean off these pans here. Now I'm gonna add in some um, little spices. So I love nutmeg. I'm gonna put in a half a teaspoon of nutmeg because we are gonna do sage with this, and sage and nutmeg are two of my favorite combinations for winter and fall. So I'm gonna put in a heaping teaspoon. This is freshly, ground, uh, freshly chopped sage leaves. You can obviously use ground, but use a lot less. Use like a, a half a teaspoon if it's ground, because ground spices are actually more potent than fresh. Did you know that? I didn't know that, but yeah, it's true. Okay, and then I'm gonna put in one and a half teaspoons of truffle salt. Oh yeah, it's gonna give that truffle flavor. Again, you can buy this online. You know what, I'm gonna use this one because it doesn't fit in there. Okay, so again, one and a half, this is a half, so one, two, three makes one and a half teaspoons of truffle salt. It's really good, try it. And then I'm gonna put in some pepper. I don't have ground pepper, I gotta do it manually. Ah, this is my labor portion. <laughs> it's good, gotta work a little bit in the kitchen, you know what I'm saying? And now I am just going to mix this up. So I'm gonna put this on low. And I just want all the ingredients to incorporate and then I add my flowers. Um, but I love making fresh pasta. It obviously tastes so much better than store-bought pasta, and it's it's so good. So try this at home. All right, I'm gonna mix my eggs on. My eggs not mixing in there. Get in there, egg, come on. Get to the party. Everyone wants you. They want you there. They want to have you there. Now, I am going to add my flowers. So, 
Here we go. I'm putting in a half a cup of semolina flour. Okay. Is this a half a cup? It's a third a cup. Ah, no. Well, put in a little bit more. Okay. I'm totally guessing. Oh, oh boy. And then <laughs> half a cup of regular flour. Oh, uh, sorry. What is it? Yeah, this is, sorry, three-fourths a cup ah, of regular flour. <laughs> we'll get it right one of these days. And all I'm going to do is let the machine do its work. Every now and then, maybe scrape down the sides to help incorporate it. And you want the dough to become sticky, to come together. And that's when you know that it will be done. So do this for about a minute. Okay, I think my dough has come together. Fabulous. So all we're going to do is um, turn this out onto a floured surface and put it in the fridge because it needs to get cold so it comes together so we can roll it out. So I've got a little board here. I'm going to make it nice and floury so my dough doesn't stick. Woo, pretty, pretty. And I'm going to take this dough down. Okay, now. All you want to do is turn this out. Wow, it is really sticky. So just be prepared. And you might have to add in a little bit more flour to make sure it's not really, really, really sticky. So it, at least it comes together. But this is sticky. I'm just telling you right now. All right. Okay. And you're just going to put it in a big lump. It doesn't have to look pretty or amazing. It just has to come together in a big lump. So, ugh. yeah. <laughs> it's very gelatinous. Mm, kind of like the blob. There, but, woo! Sticky, sticky, sticky. Just saying. Oh, come on, Joe, work with me. All right. So, what I'm going to do is wrap this in plastic wrap in a blob with some flour on top. And I'm going to we want this refrigerate this for at least half an hour so it's nice and firm. So do that. And when we come back, we'll make our gnocchi. All right, who is ready to make some gnocchi? Oh, so exciting. My dough has been firming in the fridge. I'm going to hope and pray that this is going to work because <laughs> it does, the dough is really sticky and I want to just let you know that that's okay. Um, you, you're going to be like me, you're going to be like freaking out. Well, maybe, maybe you will be smart and you won't be freaking out. We're going to be like, dough's really sticky. I don't know about this. Okay, got my dough. All I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into four pieces. Okay, for like section it up. There you go. Uh, all right, and now I'm going to take a piece because I'm going to work with it. I'm going to put my other, and what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to put this back in the fridge. I really want my dough to be cold and chilled because as soon as you start working it with it with your hands, it starts to warm up because your hands um, have heat. Yeah. So, oh, okay. That away to chill, and here I've got a piece. So all I'm going to do is sprinkle the flour, sprinkle your hands with flour so you don't stick, and I'm just going to roll this into a log. And now what you want to do is you want to roll side to side. You don't want to be rolling like this. You can do a little bit of that, but you really want to be like lengthening it. And to be honest, I can pretty much just kind of crimp and smush it and make it long. And you want it to be about an inch width, actually two inch width. And when you cut it, really important, you want it to all be the same width because when you cook it, if you have pieces that are, are bigger than others, it's gonna cook all wonky. And you're gonna have some pieces that are al dente, some that are overcooked, and you're gonna be like, oh no. So this is actually very, malleable dough. So there we go. It's about ready, about the same size. And we're, all we're going to do, take my smaller thing here. You can use a knife. You don't have to have fancy equipment. And you're just going to cut little pieces. See how cute? It's my little gnocchi. <laughs> and I'm going to put this on a floured 
um, baking sheet. I put a little wax paper on there so it just doesn't stick. And again, they're like little squares of love. Really try to keep them to be the same size. I'm actually gonna leave one here above this as like a diagram because I'm not so good about sizing it up necessarily. So leave one maybe next to all your stuff so you can size it. And keep doing this until all your dough has been cut. Now what you can do is you can freeze this dough. Um, you don't have to make all the gnocchi all at once. You can keep it in the fridge. So fresh pasta in the fridge lasts about a week, um, which is great. So you can keep these on, on the side and, and cook them up later in the week. Or again, you can freeze it, but nothing is more delicious than fresh pasta. So when you're ready to cook this babies up, do it. And um, in terms of how you can serve them, you can just boil them. It takes very quick to boil. As soon as they, um, you put them in boiling salted water and as soon as they start to pop up, they're done. And you can take them out and then you can saute them in a pan with a little butter. Um, you could use traditional tomato sauce. You could also do a pesto, which was one of my sister's favorites. She loves gnocchi with pesto sauce. Oh yeah, super good. So keep doing this, keep making your pasta pieces, your gnocchi, and then when we come back, we're gonna cook them up. Okay, see you soon. Woo, I am done making all my little gnocchis, cutting and rolling and all that kind of stuff. And it was fun, I hope you had fun doing that part too, because it's supposed to be fun, people. Cooking is supposed to be fun. Now I've got a pan of, uh, I should say saucepan of boiling salted water going, and I am gonna make some gnocchi. So all you need to do, as I said, throw it in the boiling water, let it rise to the top, and just make sure it looks cooked. So probably another minute or two that you wait before you take it out. And then just take it out with a swatted spoon. I have this lovely fancy thing with lots of holes in it. It's good. <laughs> and then just throw it onto a baking sheet. I put some Pam at the bottom of this so it just doesn't stick to the baking sheet. And make as many as you want. Again, you can put the others in a fridge. You can put them in a Ziploc bag and freeze them so you can have, keep them for like a good month. So do whatever you want. And don't crowd your uh, boiling water. So just put in enough so that it's um, they all have room to move around and swim and do all those great things. In terms of sauce, I'm probably going to just, after I boil them, put them in a pan with some butter, maybe a little sage, maybe a little olive oil, and really make them simple and just saute them on each side till the butter and all that is incorporated in. But again, you can do any sauce you want. You can do a tomato sauce. You can do a pesto sauce. Whatever you like, okay? Uh, you can do store-bought sauce. Mm. You can cheat, use store-bought sauce, it's okay. So go ahead and cook your pasta, put your sauce on, and let's see what you came up with. My gnocchi is done, it looks so beautiful. And there's only one thing left to do, eat, yay. I cooked mine very simply, I boiled it, and then I um, just sauteed it in a pan with some butter and olive oil, some sage leaves, and some lemon juice, salt and pepper, and um, sprinkled it with Parmesan, of course. And now we're gonna eat. Oh, they look gorgeous. This is a very hearty gnocchi. It's not, they're not little. But you can obviously make them any size you want. Um, but I would prepare them really simply. Oh my God. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Mmm. Lord have mercy, they're good. You have got to try this recipe at home. It's really fun, it's really easy. If you want the recipe, go to ladiesinthepink.com and pink appetite, everyone. Enjoy!